Coming up on Raider Vision, we take a look at influential attorney Lisa Colon. I'm BB Aschenberg, and this is Raider Vision. <laughs> Lisa Colon is an influential attorney known throughout South Florida. Reporters Julia Paquette and David Heisch were able to talk to her about how far she has come. Lisa Colon is one of the top construction attorneys in South Florida. Although she is thriving at the peak of her career, it wasn't always like this. Growing up, Lisa had an uncommon living situation than most people. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, um, in a very tough neighborhood. Um, so I you know, didn't have um, a traditional family like mom and dad together. I was raised by my grandmother um, who is an extremely resilient strong uh, woman who taught me everything and it's probably the reason why I'm sitting here today. Achieving her goals was difficult at times especially with the unbalanced number of women and people of color in her field. By working hard she was able to become one of the first female of color in construction law. I didn't really have mentors in the traditional sense, but I always try to learn from other folks. I would try to, you know, see who was the best uh, lawyer in my firm that did X, and then I would try to pattern and learn, like, what did they do? Um, so that, that's kind of how I just always, just be, and being curious too. One of the things that um, you have to always be open to just, one, being curious and learning through your peers, learning, just reading, um, always, always trying to figure out what's next, you know, always trying to be one step ahead of the curve. Lisa recognizes how much of a struggle it might be for young women, especially women of color, to achieve their goals. So she reaches out to the community whenever she can. But I do think it's my responsibility um, to mentor younger uh, female attorneys of color, right? So I, I take that, um, that obligation very serious. Uh, so anytime anyone asks me to be a mentor, especially if it's a woman of color, I absolutely try to make it work with my schedule. Um, I currently have two young ladies that I've mentored up and they're doing fantastic in their careers. Um, and I think that just my obligation um, to who much is given, much is expected. Lisa hopes that future generations will be able to look at the world and not be afraid to fight for what they want. Whether it's because of low number of women or people of color, she wants people to be able to realize they can achieve anything. I talked about not, not taking the easy path, um, being uncomfortable. Growth comes from being uncomfortable. I always believe that no matter how successful you are, there's always room for improvement in your life. There's always room to do better, and there's always room to grow. Reporting for Radio Vision, I'm David Heisch. Last Wednesday, the Carnaval celebration was a success with hundreds of students and faculty attending. Brazilian culture is a culture that is fun to celebrate. It is also meaningful and personal to the Brazilian people. Last week, we had our very own Brazilian culture celebration filled with food, dancing, and enjoying the great time we were having. I had a chance to interview Miss Evans, who was in charge of the event, to get a deeper dive of what the event was all about. So we decided to have this Brazilian Carnival Festival Day where we were able to celebrate our three passions, which is soccer, carnival, and uh, capoeira. Yeah? We were also able to share our music, our culture, and food. And uh, it was an initiative of the Portuguese club. And uh, the moms, the Portuguese club moms, were... Uh, very helpful and they really helped me to bring this, uh, this vision to reality. I also got the chance to see what it meant to her to be able to bring a little Brazil to Gulliver. Yeah, it, I think it meant the world to us. I think that the things that we have been going through lately with COVID and, and uh, the distancing, I think it was a really good opportunity for us to come together. And for us Brazilians, our country, it goes through, we go through so many difficult things. You know, we have corruption, we have pow poverty. And, uh, but now we actually had a chance to come together. And in Brazil, it's the same. We just were able to bring a little bit of Brazil to Gulliver. It's a chance where soccer and carnival, they are the two things that we come together as a country, no matter what color you are, what race, what social status. We are all Brazilians at the end. And we had a chance to feel that during our Gulliver Brazilian celebration. 
For Red Vision, Andre the Bankson. Real Kappa is running voter registration with Engage Miami in the Student Union next week. Isabella Bonifaci and Jacob Galrud offer a few more words about the program and what it offers for seniors. Right now, more than ever, it's very important to educate people on where they might be politically so that they can make educated decisions when they vote. Engage Miami is going to come and they'll help all these seniors register to vote if they're not registered. So this kind of gives them a place where they have the opportunity to register to vote because maybe a lot of people don't know where they can go, they don't really understand the process. The World Language Department will hold their signature event, It's a Small World, this week. There will be a flag rehearsal from 3.20 to 3.40 in the gym. There will also be a live performance. On Tuesday, there will be a speaker, and on Wednesday, there will be a cultural performance in the gym. On Thursday, there will be a movie night in room 220 where the Canadian documentary On the Way to School will be screened. On Friday, there will be a display and exhibits around the school. Next Wednesday, March 16th, there will be a peanut butter and jelly drive. For more information, please contact Ms. Roman. Now to Jonah with sports. Thanks, baby. The boys lacrosse team came down hard on Coral Shores with a final score of 13 to 3. Max Herskowitz and Marco Mendoza combined for two goals, with Herskowitz adding on an extra two assists and Ali Brillenborg racking up five GBs and two takeaways. The boys lacrosse team had a killer win against Key West with a final score of 9-3. The team will go on to face Palmer Trinity at home at 4 o'clock tomorrow. The varsity baseball team crushed Major Charter with a final score of 9-0, with senior Colin Lewis pitching four innings and seven strikeouts, and Lucas Tosca going two for three on RBIs, while Luca Mendez and Eric Delgado will combine for another five RBIs. The Raiders till 10 hits with Puig, Georgia Lombard, and Luca Tosca each managing to get two hits to lead the Raiders. The team's hot streak wouldn't just stop there, as they would, wouldn't commit a single error in the field with Eric Delgado having 10 chances in the field, that being the most on the whole team. The varsity baseball team took a close loss to North Gwinnett with a final score of 7-6. The varsity baseball team had a well-accomplished win against Lowndes with a final score of 8-4. The team will go on to play Southridge this Wednesday at home at 4 o'clock. The girls lacrosse team had a lost a close game to Coral Shores with a final score of 6-4. The girls tennis team defeated Miami Country Day with, with, with a final score of 6-1 with outstanding performances by Sofia Varayeva, Jaden Jangalizer, Mia Suarez, and Valentina Rossi. That's it for sports. Now back to the desk. Thanks, Jonah. If you have a story you'd like covered on Radio Vision, send us an email to radiovision at gulliverprep.org. We'll see you next time. Oh.